Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Happy summer. It is almost July. We are at the midpoint of the year, midpoint of 2024. This year seems to be flying by with lots going on. And uh, before I kick off, I want to say a big thank you for everyone who watched my previous video on AI ethics and the future of work. It got the most views I think I've had for a very long time. So thank you for your feedback and for the comments. Most importantly, I love chatting with people and thinking what, seeing what they think about what is going on. And this is a bit of a roundup video, actually. I mean, I'm kind of talking about geopolitics, also about AI, and also about sort of ethical guardians. Uh, and some interesting things have happened in the last few weeks, I suppose, pretty much since my last video. Uh, the first thing, which came almost straight off the back of me talking about how I don't know how AI is going to impact the future and whether ethical constraints will really matter, was that California suggested that it would introduce its own AI rules, AI, not I guess the law regulations, in terms of how AI should be adopted, what it can do, what the ethical constraints should be, should be on it. Similar in some ways, I think, to the EU's um, Artificial Intelligence Act, uh, in that it followed a, a similar approach. And the response from the AI companies, those tech companies who were investing in and promoting and producing AI, was um, some of them were, were reasonably sympathetic, but the vast majority like, well, if that happens, we will move out of California. We will go somewhere else, and we'll go somewhere where there are no regulations, which kind of underlines my view that it doesn't really matter what we try and do in terms of regulating AI, in terms of how we control the ethics relating to it, in terms of how we protect ourselves and our humanity from being essentially replaced by AI. I don't mean replaced by robots, as in we'll all become robots. I mean, we'll find that we don't have the roles in society that we used to have. I think it's almost impossible. It's something that will now be unstoppable. And what I think we're going to see now is a number of, um, I guess, guardians, safeguards in different jurisdictions around AI with a very different view on how AI is going to be implemented in different places. So I think, for example, uh, we will probably see the US be a bit of a free-for-all. Uh, I think the US is the, one, is the nation that stands to make the most money at the moment out of the development of AI. They are by far the leaders. Uh, China is desperately trying to catch up uh, for various obvious reasons. It's more difficult because the language model is going to be slightly different and they are constrained quite a lot by various technology sanctions that have been placed on China uh, as a result of various crazy things that are going on in the world right now, which we are very much uh, akin to in Hong Kong. We often see some of the reply here and that's slowing it down. But China will catch up. China will take a different view to AI. It already has a different view in that the AI is very much to foster the improvement and the advancement of the state, whereas I think in the US, it's some ways, it's just to make money and be commercially acceptable. Uh, that's a very cynical view, but there we are. And then we've got Europe. Um, Europe, which essentially is in a position where they have the AI Act, which I mentioned earlier, and they are very much controlling how technology affects human beings. Um, one of the things that I saw this week, this isn't AI related, the first, uh, potentially the first case under the Digital Markets Act, uh, this is the one that protects digital markets within the EU uh, and is the reason, for example, why Apple now have to allow apps to be downloaded on iPhones in the EU outside of the App Store, was that it looks like Apple may be facing one of the first cases in terms of trying to monopolize the way that they've forced people to sign up to restrictive terms if they are selling stuff on the App Store. So that's going to be quite interesting. But I think what's going to be most interesting is what's going to happen in the next six months. Now, I'm going to be traveling over the summer, I'm quite looking forward to it. I haven't really been anywhere for a very, very long time. I certainly haven't been back to the UK for nearly a year, so I'm going to be there around the time of general election. But there's a lot going on. Uh, we're going to have a change of government in the UK. We are slowly but surely going towards an election in the US, and I have no idea how that's going to play out. To be perfectly honest with you, if I was a betting man, I would not be a betting man at the moment because I don't know who's going to win. I don't know which will be the best outcome, quite frankly. But I think we're going to see some very interesting geopolitical, ethical in terms of AI and technological changes as AI develops even more quickly in the final half of this of this coming year. And we see the world getting a bit more shouty. And I was at a function not too long ago talking about how geopolitics is impacting the development of technology. And when I was, what's the best way to describe it? Was I was naive. Let's put it that way. When I was naive, when I was first using the internet at university, this is in the 90s, I'm showing my age, I thought, what a fantastic thing that this, there's this tool that I can send essentially an email to somebody, which was for me, it was like writing a letter and then receiving it the next day rather than someone in the US getting a letter uh, weeks or maybe months from now, depending on how the postal server is operating. And I was fascinated about how it would bring the world together and how excited 
Uh, I was about everything that we would be able to do as this sort of global Star Trek-esque view of humanity. And I couldn't really have been more further from the truth because it seems that a lot of what AI has done, although it's brought some people together, in the main, we're in this battle now to develop the most efficient, most uh, most incredible technology, keep it to ourselves and use it to essentially exploit as best we can to get ahead. And I just feel like we've lost a bit of what we should be trying to do. And I worry that in the next um, in the next six months, as we get close to certainly as we get close to the U.S. election, I think this is the thing I'm possibly most worried about. We're going to see some pretty drastic things, some saber rattling from nation states. Uh, some concerns over AI that will go unheard, uh, and possibly some cool advancements in tech, which maybe will fade into the background. We have new graphics cards coming from NVIDIA, which may not seem very exciting to you, but they will offer me. But they will also come with advancements in artificial intelligence. Remember, AI, uh, NVIDIA, purely thanks to AI, has become now one of the most dominant and um, richest companies in the world, although share price does go up and down a bit, I have to say. Uh, Apple have announced their Apple Intelligence, their AI tool, is that their AI platform will be now available, it'd be run quite in associated with OpenAI. That will be available on all Apple devices. There's this real sort of convergence going on in terms of what technology looks like. And I actually think the second half of 2024 will be the most important, I guess, six months in terms of technology development that we've seen possibly in the last five, six, seven, eight, nine years, possibly more than that. But also the most, I think, the most rocky, the most scary in terms of the sort of... Uh, the advances in technology that develop, the way that technology is used, uh, but also I think the constraints on it and the worry as to how it's going to be misused. I think we're going to see people really start to get a real concern that the fact we are facing essentially as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a species, if that makes sense, but certainly in terms of our way of life, I suppose, a bit of a crisis. We are, we are coming close to what it will essentially be an AI industrial revolution, and if we feel the fear is that the way the world's at the moment is that the rich seem to get richer, uh, the people who have got lots of advantages take advantage of the advantages, and those others get left behind. For example, um, third world countries, where are they in the AI revolution? Well, not really anywhere. They, they're struggling. And what I think will happen is that either they will continue to struggle or they will be essentially gifted AI and technology and resources from some other nation states, but possibly at the chance that if they do that, if they <clears throat> if they are essentially being given these gifts, they will be returned for some support. Whereas we see, you know, we see nation states buying support around the world at the moment because it feels sometimes like the, the world may be on the brink of a potential war. There's too many flashpoints. And if there's a war, of course, that will be fought with AI. We'll have drones blowing uh, people up, which we already have in very many places around the world at the moment. So it's interesting to see. And for me as a tech futurist, someone who loves technology, who's, who's obsessed with it, it's kind of scary to see this, this dystopia endgame that people seem to be leading us towards, where we've got these fantastic technologies, things that can really revolutionize the human race. But there's real concern about people being replaced or people losing their jobs or people losing their livelihoods, rather than thinking how we can use it to actually benefit the world and how it should be the future. Maybe it's just us as a species. I don't know. Now, I am, as, a, as you know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, if you've watched any of my videos, I am a technology lawyer. Um, the law doesn't really protect you in terms of, of, of AI in anywhere in the world, really, apart from really the EU, but that's not really in force yet. Uh, but what I think is interesting is that for me as a lawyer, seeing how technology has changed that, and that it has the advantage of being a, a, a tool, AI can be a tool that can make a lawyer's life a lot easier, can get rid of a lot of the mundane tasks that we have to do. And certainly I did some absolutely awful things as a, um, as, a, as, a, as a trainee lawyer, some of the most boring tasks, mind-numbing tasks in my life. And you can get rid of those, but instead oh, I think that the focus now is how AI can mean we don't need as many lawyers. We can just sort of get rid of people, replace them with robots, but what happens to those people that are left behind? So it's interesting. I do think we're going to see some jurisdictions try and impose some controls now on how AI is used, but I think that geopolitics and the fact that the world is really much battling itself, it's probably one of the most competitive markets I have seen at the moment in terms of trying to get ahead on other, other, other companies, certainly, but also other countries. I think we're into a pretty bumpy ride. We're seeing some interesting ideologies come out. There's the rise of the right, right more than what there was before. Uh, Right-wing politicians seem to be very popular. Strong men seem to be very popular. Oh, and women, let's be honest, there are plenty of those too. 
uh, particularly in France at the moment. They seem to be to be gaining prominence, and um, AI will be used as a tool in that. The last thing, of course, is we've got the uh, we've got these elections that I keep talking about, and AI misinformation is everywhere. The amount of rubbish that I see on social media, and I'm not even actively looking for it. I know there's no talk of, of TikTok being essentially banned by the US as a result of this, but it doesn't really matter about TikTok. I've said this before. It's on every platform. Everyone is, is spouting an agenda. Everyone is doing everything to convince someone else. It's like we have. It's like it's essentially we've been turned into a vast army of snake oil salesmen, all not telling the truth, all just trying to get their way just to make a quick buck. So there we go. Uh, in the summer, as I said, I'll be in the UK for a while. Drop me a message on LinkedIn or if you've got my email or you want to get me on YouTube, but by all means do if you are around and you'd like to catch up. I'll be giving a couple of talks, I guess, over the summer. I'll be back relatively soon. I'm only there for a few, I'm only traveling for a couple of weeks, but I'm quite looking forward to it. And um, I'll be interested to see what happens. It'd be interesting, very interesting to see how Apple AI in, implement in, so it changes things, if it changes it at all. I don't think it will. I just think it will be a glossier, nicer way to use chat GPT, perfectly, perfectly, perfectly honest. But I think we're going to see a big fight at the moment in terms of who is control of AI and the people I think we've realized, or rather corporations and governments have realized, whoever's got the best AI tools is going to have economic and possibly military and political dominance as we go forward. And this can only end badly. This is something, this is something out of a sci-fi novel come very, very real. I think take your minds off that. Don't don't worry too much. Go and enjoy some sunshine if you can and have a good summer instead. And uh, let me know what you think of this video. If there's any topics you'd like me to cover, please do. I'll probably talk about some um, something not AI related uh, relatively soon. Although I have to be honest with you, in terms of, of not AI related technology and law news, it is pretty quiet. Everyone is holding their breath to see what's happening in the world of artificial intelligence and who can blame them. I think it's all very exciting. So yeah, that's it for the moment. Have a fantastic summer wherever you are, whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, and enjoy. Uh, I will be back very soon with another video, I guess within a month, that's what I normally try to do, and hopefully some more in-person events. I did some great ones um, a couple of weeks ago, and I very much enjoyed meeting people in person rather than just staring blankly into the lens of a camera and talking incessantly. But yeah, let me know what your views are. Um, Geopolitics at the moment is pretty scary, and AI is going to make it scarier. There you go, that was my video in a nutshell. Have a good one. I'll see you soon. Take care.